right now we're going to tackle one of the biggest problems that we've found with this bike. The cam chain is loose. I discovered this whilst we were trying to set the cylinders to top dead center. The uh, cam chain was dropping about that much. It hasn't done it on the bikes I've done before. So I went onto the internet and searched the Adventure Rider website on the forum that this can happen. So the BMW way of doing this is to take the engine out of the frame, split the cases and replace the cam chain. It is also the way that is described in this one. However, some clever chap found that you can get a split link or a master link for the cam chain. This means that there's a possibility to break the old chain, put the new one on, push it through and then connect the new chain. However, I also want to change all the guides in case they're a bit damaged. So you cannot see them and there's three guides. There's one on the top, that's easy to change. There's one on the front. That one requires the exhaust cam to come out. And then there's the cam tensioner one that's on the back or towards the back of the engine, i.e. the intake cam. That one is unfortunately pivoting on a bolt that is hiding behind the clutch cover. So to do that, to change that one, I need to take the clutch cover off. So. Check the there we go. Sump. See that it's got this one side, it's got one side is uh, comic. And you can see that the shininess is there. However, it's no big pieces of or anything. It is magnetic for this exact reason, so that it will collect up these little pieces of metal and swarf.
haven't been filming this because I've been trying to stay really focused and laughing about with cameras and talking to people I don't know it can be a bit uh, distracting. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to change the cam chain of this bike without taking the engine out. As described on Ad Ad Motor, Adventure Motor website forum. As I didn't film this I thought I'd talk you through this. Let's look at the engine first. To be able to lock the engine in TDC you need to make a locking pin which is an M8 bolt that has been ground on the end so that it can lock to the crankshaft. Then you need to remove the cam retainer cover and then the intake camshaft first and then the exhaust camshaft. Make sure you store them nicely so that nothing gets bumped into or scratched or anything like that. To prepare the new cam chain you need to first grind off one link. This might um, feel a little bit wrong but uh, we're just going to have to do it for the greater good. I wrapped the cam chain in a towel to prevent any dust getting onto it. Once we got the rivets ground off we can use a chain rivet tool to push the pins out. This tool here, very handy. Be very careful about this pin. It is very, very fragile. If you don't get the, if you don't get the tool on correctly, it will bend. So be careful. You then set the tool up so that it pushes the pin out of the link. When you've pushed both the old and new chains pins out. These are the bits that you should be left with. Here's the old the plate and the pins from the original chain. There's the plates from the original chain. There's the master link plate and there's the master link itself. There's the pin from the old chain. Let's step back one little step. We need to prepare the old cam chain in the bike. First I covered up everything with towels so that the grinding dust wouldn't get anywhere that it shouldn't. Then I carefully ground off both sides of the rivet. Then I had to position the uh, riveting tool in between the frame, obviously perfectly parallel and then I was able to push the pin out. Once the chain was split, I could link up the new chain. I used a bit of TIG filler wire in aluminium so that it wouldn't damage anything else. And I obviously also tied up uh, both the ends with some string. I then ended up with this sort of contraption that uh, had both of the strings tied up into the ceiling uh, with bungee cords to keep them taut. Now I'm <laughs> a bit nervous because now I need to rotate the engine and pull the new chain through and uh, yeah anyway before that let's get a proper before picture so in here you can see my link so top is my new chain bottom is the old chain so now I'm going to carefully try to rotate the engine and spin that new chain into place. Wish me luck. I had initially hoped that I could move the chain around without spinning the engine. However, it seems that it is too tight below the crank and the sprocket on the crank that the chain just won't move around there. So, uh, so the process ended up being something on the lines of rotate the rear wheel a little bit, then adjust the bungee cords to keep the chains taut, and then repeat this procedure until the 
link showed up at the other side. I then removed my temporary link and moved the string onto the new chain to make sure I didn't drop the chain down into the engine. Then I was faced with the problem of putting the new master link on and all the three plates that go in there. This turned out to be very fiddly, but in the end I came up with a solution where I used two aluminium rods so that I could put the links in on each side first and then push the two rods away using the master link. I then used the rivet tool to press the master link plate onto the new master link. Then I used the rivet tool to rivet both of the uh, rivet individually. I noticed that I riveted the second one a little bit harder than the first one so I went back and re-riveted the second one. I also made sure that the link wasn't too tight and it moved just like the other links. It was around this time I started feeling my blood pressure dropping and a bit of a victory. As I also changed the three cam chain guides, I thought I'd show you a few pictures of them. They were all worn, but in far better condition than I would have imagined. I also replaced the cam chain tensioner. And as you can see, on the right hand side, the spring has got more turns and is a little bit thinner. So the new one is uprated indeed. Then it was time to put everything back together. This involves a lot of checking and rechecking and double checking and triple checking, being very careful reading the manual over and over again. But eventually, both the cams are in place and the cam retainer is in place, all the new guides are in place, and luckily it seemed to work. And then I checked the valve clearances just to make sure that nothing had changed and everything was okay. I have to say this episode was the most nerve-wracking part of this whole bike service to be doing. Not only was this a bit of a question of whether was this cam chain right or was it wrong, does it need replacing or doesn't it? And once we finally figured out what that it needed replacing then the question was how and if it weren't for the guys on the ad rider forum then this would have been done by the book and that would have taken a very long time 40 hours of active work to get the engine out of the frame split the cases and put it all back together not to mention the additional cost of gaskets and all things like that. I'm very pleased how it turned out and once again a big thank you to everybody at the Adventure Rider Forum. You guys rock. Without you guys this would have been impossible as uh, Ralph would have said. So thanks again everybody and I hope this video gives someone the uh, courage to go do it. Uh, it's not as bad as it seems just be careful and take one thing at a time thanks for watching i appreciate it